Hey, welcome to Nourishable Raw, an authentic conversation about nutrition with me, Dr. Lara. The other day, my husband was asking me about the differences between sea salt and table salt, and whether sea salt is healthier. I had a few ideas, but honestly, off the top of my head, I didn't know. Sea salt is often promoted as being more natural, which gives it a health halo. But is it deserved? Let's science it. The differences between sea salt and table salt are due to how they're processed. Table salt is mined from salt caves, ground up into teeny tiny little crystals, and processed to remove other minerals. So essentially, you're just left with these tiny crystals of sodium chloride. Table salts can be fortified with the mineral iodine. More on that later. Sea salt is evaporated from ocean and seawater. The sodium chloride crystals are larger because they're not ground up. It's also not processed to remove other minerals, so there can be trace amount of minerals like calcium and magnesium. The biggest difference is in taste and texture, with the giant sea salt crystals giving crunch and a concentrated salty flavor versus the teeny table salt crystals that dissolve more evenly in food. No health differences here, just personal preferences. What about those differences in naturally occurring minerals? While sea salt does contain some minerals that are essential for health, like calcium and magnesium, the amounts are pretty negligible. You'd have to eat an enormous amount of sea salt in order to get a relevant intake of these minerals. So from this perspective, sea salt and table salt are pretty equivalent. Now there could be important differences in the amount of iodine though. Back in the late 1800s, there were regions across the US that were severely iodine deficient. Iodine is a mineral that is required to produce thyroid hormone, which regulates metabolism. When there isn't enough iodine, the thyroid gland will continue to try and produce thyroid hormone, causing it to enlarge and become a goiter. And this is especially problematic for pregnant women. Thyroid hormone is critical during fetal development, with low thyroid hormone levels le leading to irreversible neurological impairment in their kids. Fortification of table salt with iodine in the 1920s prevented iodine deficiency and is considered to be a major public health accomplishment. These days, major dietary sources of iodine are milk and eggs due to iodine supplementation of animal feed, plus seafood and seaweed. And if you think you don't eat seaweed, think again. Many components of seaweed, like carrageenan and agar, are used as thickeners and stabilizers in processed food. Sea salt has negligible amounts of iodine in it. But is this relevant for your health? There isn't good data on whether switching to sea salt reduces your iodine intake in relevant ways. It could be prudent to talk to your personal physician about iodine intake if your diet is low in the other iodine sources like milk, eggs, seafood, and seaweed. One way in which table salt and sea salt are the same is sodium content. Both contain the same amount of sodium by weight. And whether it's from table salt or sea salt, it's critical to pay attention to how much sodium you're eating. While sodium is an essential nutrient for regulating fluid balance and sending nerve impulses, our body's pretty good at recycling it. Eating too much sodium increases blood pressure, which can lead to hypertension, a silent but deadly risk factor for heart disease, stroke, and kidney disease. And Americans eat far too much sodium, on average 3,500 milligrams per day. The Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends a max of 2,300 milligrams per day, and the American Heart Association promotes a lower cap of 1,500 milligrams. The tricky thing about reducing sodium intake is that it's already added to packaged, prepared, and restaurant foods in really high amounts. Foods contributing the most sodium to the diet are cold cuts, breads and rolls, pizza, chicken, and soup. To reduce your sodium intake, shift towards minimally processed home-cooked whole foods, or choose the lower sodium version of packaged foods. So what do we do with this information? There aren't any major health differences between sea salt and table salts. Just because sea salt is more natural doesn't mean it deserves a health halo. It's really just a matter of personal preference. If you like the texture and flavor pop of the giant sea salt crystals, then go for it. Now, whether it's table salt or sea salt, the most important factor is reducing your overall sodium intake. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable Raw. If you have a question you'd like me to do an episode on, leave it in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.